white knights. <laughs> Hi, we're back live! <laughs> In three, two, one. As we talk about promotions, they're fun, but there's the person that brings them to life. There's the person that actually creates the sound that goes along with it. Everybody loved the last contest because of the way the prizes sounded. Well, we didn't always run the last contest. We ran the bottling can drive. We ran the $500 thing. Here's the man who used to put the promos together. Ladies and gentlemen, Popcorn Bill Perda. Yeah. Now, remember, hold the camera, tell them who you are, tell them what years you were. <laughs> My favorite color is blue. <laughs> I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> Seventy-six to eighty-two. When I sadly left town for good, but I'm back to it, so that's what counts. Hey, don't forget that I talk about promotion. Chuck, you remember this one? Wacky will die for your school. Remember that coyote was gonna dye his hair the school color, <laughs> but he doesn't have any hair. <laughs> what the hell's up with that? Still the same. Oh, like I should talk. Ooh, yeah, Mr. Macho, Mr. Big, yeah, guy up here. Anyway, uh, Mason, you were talking about uh, John letting you break the rules. Yeah, I've been there about a month. I was doing overnight, so I had to do a Sunday thing. It was like ten to two or something like that. So um, we're doing a contest one weekend. You play the sounder. The ninth caller calls in, they get the prize. So you roll the tape and then you play back the winner. Do the sounder, winner calls in, wins the contest, and right after the winner calls, uh, this girl calls. We like to talk. And she liked to talk about stuff you don't want to go on the air. Well, of course, the tape behind me, the real reel, is still rolling because the song that's going to get played next is on the same pod as that real reel. Up uh, goes the pod. So, uh, what would you say you wanted to do? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, yeah, see you later. Call me next week. Yeah. That, that was strange. So, about five minutes later, Stephen Lee Cook, the weekend warrior, comes bursting in the door and says, Oh, my God. We're going to lose our license, and we're all going to get down. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? Calm down. You and that girl on the air. Uh, uh, all right, that's it. I'm done. I'm here. I, flew, I have been there a month. So I think this was the next day when you came in to get the music logs and program logs. So you come in, I'm thinking, okay, do I tell him or do I just play it dumb? <laughs> Yeah, you better tell. You better tell because he is from somebody else. You know, I'm going to be fired. You'll be shot and sent out of town on a rail. So I'm reaching into my pocket to get my keys and go ahead and take them off the ring because I know I'm going to have to give them back and say, all right, John, I would not have believed this. And I told him the whole story. And it's like I'm confessing to my dad. And I mean, in the two ways it was. So I'm thinking he's going to say, yeah, you dumbass. Get the hell out of here. What kind of doofus move was that? Instead, he says, well, you know, you did the right thing by telling me about this because I wouldn't want to hear about it from somebody else. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, and I'm standing there, you know, like a hyperventilator. He says, yeah, you know what, though? If I get any calls Monday, I'll, I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so from that moment on, Sean Randolph became my dad. It's like, holy cow, I mean, my wingman, my foxhole buddy, the guy you want with you in a bar fight, that kind of thing. And I think we all feel that way, because I had a, a Tom story, too. I was in town to take my FCC third phone license. <laughs> so I could get a job at a local radio station down in Harrodsburg. Phone on in. So after the test, my dad says, hey, uh, you want to go buy Wacky? Golly, Daddy, could we? Rules, <laughs> movie stars. So we do. So we go in, John's on the air, and my dad goes up to the receptionist and uh, says something to her, comes back over and sits down, and kind of like your story. In a minute, John opens the door and does this. <laughs> Are you talking to me? I get to go in. He shows me the control room. It's like, this is like, gee, Dad, it's a daisy. It's every kid's dream. And I guess that was 68 uh, a 
eight years later, he hires me. So uh, that that's that was the the start of the absolute and ultimate uh, years of my career. So my hats off to you, John. You know, I, I, I still work on the lessons I learned from from him today. So next time, make sure you don't put those kind of calls on the air, dumbass. <laughs> I know this is going to be hard to believe for your kids, but there were actually one time, at one time, six disc jockeys on the radio. There was a morning drive, there was a yeah. midday, there was an afternoon guy, there was an early evening, there was a late evening, there was an overnighter. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my favorite 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. guy. It is Chuck Jackson. Yeah! yeah. I want to say that to pick up on Bill, I, that Sunday afternoon I did 10 to 2, and he came on. But the thing about that story was the Doobie Brothers, I think it was a long train run, and I got a turner, turner, and all of a sudden here, it's a little bit of a turner. I got a radio cranked up, and it's senior at Trinity High School, uh, a guy by the name of Mike Smith, worked middays, and uh, I lived next door to him, and he invited me down to Wacky one weekend, and uh, he was that uh, actual guy that got me in, 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 into it, and uh, that was uh, in the year of 1969. Uh, I started off in radio, and where John uh, lives now, Danville, Kentucky. Uh, my first gig was... Uh, W-H-I-R, and I'm a city guy, just a real quick story, city guy, I don't know much about fishing, now when I went to W-H-I-R in Danville, I did the news, I was the disc jockey, I was the engineer, I was everything, I signed the station on at 6 a.m. and I got off at 12 noon, so we had the AP machine and I had to give the fishing report, <laughs> so for about the first week I'm on the radio, I'm giving this murky waters, and the crappies are biting. And I'm saying crappies. Finally, this guy called that to him and boy, well, I think that's crappy. Whoa. Okay, now I don't know what crappies are. Um, but it was one of the, I guess, the, the greatest day of my life. I always wanted to work at Waggy Radio. I was in Buffalo, New York working at uh, WGRQ FM in Buffalo. Um, I was Shotgun Jackson, uh, working shotgun. 60. Yeah, yeah Shotgun Jackson. Um, high Energy FM radio. And uh, I'd been there about a month. And I remember uh, it was in September. It was about 4.30 in the afternoon. The secretary said, uh, Shotgun, you got a call. I went over and answered the phone, and it was Johnny Randolph. And Johnny said, I got an opening. Would you like it? I said, I'm on my way. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I went to uh, Wacky in September of 1973, worked uh, behind uh, one of my, at the time, my best buddy, Coyote Calhoun, uh, for uh, five straight years through 1978. And um, I just got to say that. Um, one of the things that I tell people to this day, that there's only one man I ever worked for that understood people and how to, at least, you got to figure you're dealing with uh, egos, you know, Bill Bailey and uh, the, the Tom Dooley's and Gary Burbanks and all those guys. I said, what Johnny Randolph would always do is sit you down and tell you all about the good things that you did. Then he might introduce in a roundabout way, this might be you want to work on this. So I always thought that was the way to handle people. Tell them what all their good things are, and then a little bit throwing there, you might work on this. So to this day, that's what I tell my children. I tell them all their good stuff, but you might want to do it. And uh, that's it, and I'm just happy that I spent uh, the time I did 
the great uh, Super 79 WAKY and everybody else. Thank you.